the animal safe to keep him in one place. He's going to be our four-star diamond, three-star diamond, and diamond coach from Scottsdale, Arizona. Let's hear it for Lee Rodderman! <laughs> Take it away, guys. Well, thank you again, everyone. I know we've said it before, but thanks so much for coming out on a Saturday, taking time. I mean, there's a big difference between interested and committed, and I believe that most of you that are here are not part of the 70,000 coaches that are just interested in this business. You're here because you are committed. And we want to respect that and honor your time and give you just a glimpse into how we've been successful. Um, a, a little story on me. I'm a mom. I have four kids. And I got introduced to this business as just a customer, like many of you. I was out of shape and tired. I wasn't happy. And my neighbor, Monica Ward, was just a friend of mine. I had just met her. We met at the park. I happened to be eight months pregnant. And she was just telling me her story, how she moved to Phoenix, how she knows some people in Phoenix. And we got to talking. <coughs> Beachbody came up. And she had had a transformation and had been maintained her success over time. And I thought, well, that's, that's an awesome story. And I kept it channeled in the back of my mind that I was having a baby and I didn't really need fitness. I mean, I was pregnant. Uh, but a few months went by and had my baby on her husband's birthday, nonetheless. But um, time went by, and I said to her, you know, I lost a lot of my weight, but I, I'm interested in that thing you were talking about. And she shared, you know, it was Power 90. She helped me place my order, and she helped me stay accountable. And at this time, there wasn't a Beachbody coaching program. It was really just friends helping friends. So she helped me. She worked out with me. She watched my kids. She encouraged me. You know, we cooked together. It was just a very supportive environment. And in four months, I lost 21 pounds on top of the baby weight that I had already lost. So now I was smaller than the day I got married. And everyone around me was saying, what did you do? Like, I had a nine-month-old baby, and I was smaller than the day I got married. And that's never happened to me before, but I bet it hasn't happened to most people before. And I would just tell them, I did Power 90, go to Beachbody.com and get this program. And that was kind of how things were for a few months. And Carl Deichler called Monica and said, Monica, you are an example of what I want. To, I'm changing the business model, I'm adding this coaching thing, and I want you to come hear about it. And then she came back and said, Lee, this is what we're doing. You know, I was asked to be a founding coach because we're doing what we need to do. You need to come do this. And in the beginning, she and I had no idea what this was. We really thought that we were there to, you know, get a discount on our products and help people, and we could make $100 a month and pay for our own products, and, you know, a little bit of grocery money, we'd be really happy. And it, this business has completely transformed itself. And I'll, I'll tell you the turning point as to what, what did that, really. I mean, we were out there sharing like we were, enrolling people, sharing the products, telling people about the business, um, and consistent about it. And then the Beachbody game plan came around. And this is the training that we're at today. I know Arnold mentioned how that changed my business, but it was um, two and a half years ago, and I remember that because I attended the event with my three-week-old baby. And what changed for me was, while I was pregnant, I, I was doing the business, and I was watching the leaders and the top coaches and thinking, Okay, this is my turn. I'm in, the, I'm in the running here. I'm on the leaderboard. I can do it. And I'd look and I'd be like, oh, but I'm eight months pregnant and I'm tired. And oh, this other coach I know is better than me and has, it's going to beat me. And I'm just, oh, I can't do it. And you know what? I didn't do it. So that whole year, I kind of watched myself get close and not do it. And I just said, well, okay, it's not happening. It's not working. Well, I realized, okay, I'm, there's this game plan thing out there, and I'm going. If this baby is out, I will be there. That was my commitment. I was no longer interested. I was committed. I had the baby, and I, I got a little bit of anxiety when I found out I was taking a three-week-old baby to an event out of the state. But I got in the car with my girlfriend, and we drove our six-hour drive in nine hours and arrived at the event. And I think I was in a complete brain fog, but I, I showed up, and I committed. And at that point, I learned about the game plan and success club, and I said, Okay, I will be in Success Club from now on. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I made that commitment. And I've been in Success Club for 26 months. And it's not... A, I'm telling you this because I think that many of you are in the same position that I was in. You're interested, you're committed, you're here, you're showing up. But until you say that you will do the act that will get you to where you want to be, and then reset your goal, 
Like I got into success club and I said, well, okay, so I'm gonna be a top coach and an elite coach. And that year I finished the business and I was an elite coach and a top coach. Now, it didn't happen just because I pulled it from the sky and said that I wanted it to happen. It happened because once I set that end, like Arnold said, the end in mind, and I went backwards and said, well, what do I need to be an elite coach? I had to understand it. I needed to be a two-star diving coach. Okay, so how am I gonna do that? I need to help people understand what I'm doing and grow a team. And so I went through and then I needed to be consistent in my activities. But what changed when the game plan was announced, yes, they set the bar at success, success club, but they also created a bunch of tools that you guys now have available to you and we continually develop more tools. So these sharing tools we're gonna talk a little bit about we need to use, because you share the business and you follow up. So Mike and I are gonna get into that process and the details behind that. Um, but really quickly, I wanna tell you what being in Success Club did for my business. Because I was doing the business part-time about you know 30 minutes, 40 minutes a day, kind of following up with people, reaching out there, and I put it out there. And I would follow up and build relationships. But what I was missing was the follow through. So even though I would follow up, I never really followed through and I didn't ask for the sale and I didn't bring people onto the team. And so I needed to learn how to be an effective coach. So I was out there and doing it consistently, I mean, for years. And when I changed that and I said, I will enroll people, I will ask for sales, I will do, I will be a business person and I treated my business like a business. That year that I wound up striving for those top goals and I changed everything about not what I was doing, maybe about how I was doing it, um, my income quadrupled. So it was already maybe $500 a week in the beginning of the year and finished that year at $2,000 a week. So it really was something that, it, was, it wasn't about the money. It, it really wasn't, but I have to tell you that part of the story so that you can understand. The, the why in there, I mean, I'm a, fa I'm a family person, I've got four kids and, and I wanna do this so that the stress of providing for our family isn't just there on my husband. I really want to be a provider again. I worked before I had kids. And what this company is allowing me to do is to create that kind of an income and to, to save for our family. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to say about that real quick, if I can remember it. <laughs> the, the turning point, I think, when I realized that the business was really helping out, because I would always say, well, what is it doing for you? It's giving you money. And I couldn't really like put a, my thumb on it. You know, In the beginning, it was a little bit of extra money for groceries or maybe to go shopping. It wasn't anything substantial. It became a car payment. But then what really turned in my mind was we were, we bought a house, a second home. Well, we were moving, we planned to move and we bought a home. And it wasn't contingent upon the sale of our other home, but we knew we would sell our other home. And what happened was is the real estate market in Arizona crashed really, really badly. And we had to, our home was on the market and it wasn't selling. And the amount of stress that was put into our lives at that time was tremendous. And I kept trying to look past it, but it kept creeping back. I mean, we were paying on the house and on the electricity and on the lawn and on the pool and all these bills were coming in. And then we had our new house and it was a little bigger and it was the same thing on that house. And it just wasn't going away. And we kept reducing the price on the house. And I looked and I kept saying, well, it's okay, it's okay. And I'd look at my check and I'd say, I can cover the mortgage this month. And we kept lowering the price on the house and we eventually sold that house. But I realized, looking back, that it was my business that saved us from having to foreclose on that home and walk away from it. So we actually were able to carry it long enough to sell it and not have to go through that process. So Beachbody really provided for us something and now that we were back to owning one home, we're now able to save for our college for our kids. And I mean, I'm able to just, if my kid wants to do dance, I used to say, well, we can really only afford to do one thing per kid. You know, it was something that meant something to the kids and it meant something to me, but I couldn't just go and say, okay, yeah, go to dance. And now I feel like I have liberties to give them the things that I want to. And it's because of me, it's because of what I'm doing. But more than that, it's because of you guys and because I'm helping my team and people around me change their lives. And so that's been the biggest gift to me is that I can help people, but yet it rewards me. I'm gonna let Mike tell you, I know he's got a very powerful story and then we're gonna get into some of the activities for you guys. But Mike, can you tell us your story, please? Yeah. I got this one. I get my didn't own. know if you were okay I'm with the cord. over there. Okay, no tripping. No, no. uh, uh, so I'm, I live in somewhat Southern California and you know when you mentioned the real estate crash, my background's in real estate, I'm a broker. And so we had just expanded in a big way right before the market crashed. We were killing it. My specialty was land development and you know, I, my thing was, I was great with uh, relationships. And I mean, it's no different 
with doing this business, I don't care if you're doing real estate, if you're a personal trainer, if you're a carpenter, you're in the personal relationship business. If you can't sit and have a conversation with somebody, you know, you're know you gonna have a hard time in life, I don't care what you're doing. And so in real estate, since I was good at personal relationships and I'm from the town I grew up in, uh, in Bakersfield, I was really good at putting these deals together because it was a thing about getting people to come together to agree, to realize why this was good for the community, to map this land and turn it into residential lots or commercial or whatever it was. But you had to have everything clicking. You had to have political connections, you had to have staff connections, you had to have engineers and brokers and title and all the things that went into the minutiae of a deal. And things were going great. So through the expansion, we built the big house, we bought an expensive car, we bought another car that didn't need. Then, you know, we thought, oh, let's go move to Real Estate Row. Our office downtown is cool, but everybody else is in the Southwest on Camino Media. We need to be on Camino Media. And, uh, and so we expanded. Then we thought, oh, you know what? We're, we do all these different things. We're kind of a boutique operation, but we did new home sales and we represented public builders and private builders. We thought, well, let's, let's do high-end homes. Let's, let's own the high-end market. So then we, uh, we worked really hard and we got a Sotheby's franchise. And then the market goes and you're stuck. Like, what are you gonna do? You just signed a lease. You just expanded. You just hired people, right? You have all these deals in escrow and you're watching all your wealthy clients walk away from millions of dollars and you're going, well, what am I gonna do? And, the, and all this happens, and, and the, the night, there was a Sunday night when, if anybody's watching the news, and I know Arnold was, because he's a financial background guy, uh, Lehman Brothers Tanks, the oldest financial firm in the United States history, 166 year old firm, bankrupt. And all I could think is, holy, you know what? Because that was it, that was it for us. All my deals were dead, all my clients walked away, and we ended up losing everything we owned. Houses, cars, rentals, the business, you name it, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. Where am I gonna put my kids in school? We had to move, the whole thing, right? And so I can paint this picture of 2008 as this horrific year that it was, because it was, it was awful. And, and through real estate, like I don't know if is there anybody in real estate in here, right? So I don't know how bad you guys are affected, but pretty much everybody's been affected somehow. And I'm not knocking real estate, it's a great thing, I, I don't do it anymore. And I thank God every day I don't have to do it anymore, but it's, you know, because of this. But, um, but through that process, I got introspective and I looked back and I thought, well, what just happened? Uh, what was I doing? Why was I doing it? You know, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm missing this section of the room because it's killer. And so it was about making money. I, I was doing it because I needed to make money. My background before that was in sports and then uh, in family business was, that was related to sports. And so I just, I needed to make more money so I got to get out of family business and so I'm going to go into real estate. I'm good to people and, you know, I know everybody in town. Well, and it was about making money. My, I'm not from a real estate family. My mom's not a realtor. My dad's not a commercial broker. It was just one of those things where I needed to make money. And so there's nothing wrong with that. That's what, like, you know, you talked about that's what makes the world go around. But it wasn't my purpose. You know, it wasn't what I felt like I was driven to do. And so in the same time in 2008, I can paint that picture of this incredible year where we found P90X on TV like most people do. And you know, I saw this infomercial and I'm like, man, this is like real people. These are home videos of people sharing their transformations. And it was, uh, it was March 16th of 2008. And I remember we were about to go to the, I was gonna go to the grocery store and get uh, like green balloons or something for the kids, right? Right, we're Irish, so I'm like, oh, I gotta go you know, get St. Patrick's Day balloons. I get back from the store, got the balloons, the gold glitters, you know, Kelly's like, well, did you order that, that workout you're talking about? I'm like, Kelly, I don't know if I told you, but I went to the gym today and I bought a two year membership and I prepaid it for two years with daycare because you wanted this gym membership. She goes, we don't have the money. I'm like, I know, but you really want this membership. And I was kind of tired of listening to you keep telling me for three weeks you want this membership. So I finally bought you this membership. She goes, but you're, you really think this thing works? I'm like, I don't know how to explain it. I just know this thing works. I'm, I'm looking at it and it's my gut feeling that this thing's gonna work. Like if it works for them, it can work for me. And so, you know, over 90 days, I lost like 44 pounds. I quit snoring. I all of a sudden, my back didn't hurt anymore. I was going, man, I'm like Mr. Injuries. I've had like a half dozen sports surgeries and too many cortisone shots and, you know, my body's kind of thrashed. But um, so 2008 ends up being this incredible year of, of this journey of health where I got my life back. Like, like my wife's a light sleeper. I didn't even get to sleep in my bedroom for five months before we started P90X because I snored so bad. I mean, I was contemplating the snoring surgery and there's only two reasons I didn't get it, that I'm, I'm one of six kids. One of my brothers had the snoring surgery twice and he still snored, and he's a little guy, he's a little wiry guy, and then I didn't have the money for it. That was it, really. I just If I had the money for it, I probably would have done it, regardless if it didn't work for Tim. 
And, and so we find out about this business. My coach was in Nebraska, some gal I'd never met before, and you know, you're assigned this coach. I'm like, I don't know why, who this coach is, but she's killed my wife, all this awesome advice on nutrition and you know, food and whatever. And she says, well, you, has this ever come up in conversation for you before? I'm like, well, yeah, it comes up all the time. My neighbors are all asking me about what I'm doing. I'm like, I don't know if I really look any different. Maybe I'm carrying myself different. I don't know. And she goes, well, you're doing what I'm doing. You just didn't get paid for it. I'm like, what? And so being a business guy, I went and examined the business model, and I, and I thought, you know, I've never done network sales before. And I'm like, I've been in sales, but I just knew I didn't want to do what I was doing in real estate, where I'm not going to do something just to go make money. If I wanted to just go make money, I'd learn a different sector of real estate, and I'd go back in and figure it out, and I would do it. And so we just made our passion our vocation, and then the rest is followed. And so, you know, when you, like you talked about the France trip, or, or about the, uh, not France trip, you talked about um, like success club and leadership, and we, were, we happened to be sitting at the table at the game plan event right behind Lee when she had a brand new baby at this event. And that was a big deal to me, because all I could think is, this gal's got a brand new baby, and she's at this event. And like, that packed a punch to me. I didn't even know you at the time. We just met like that day. And I'm going, this is like pretty serious stuff. Like she's got a brand new baby and she's not from here. I'm like, I only lived a couple hours from where that event was, but like that was a big deal to make that trip. Well, anyway, I had talked so many good people out of this business. That was October of 09. So I look at my life in this business as October of 09, pre and post, right? Before then, the only people that still talk to me from Beachbody is my wife and this guy in Nebraska. Okay, that's it. I talked to everybody else out of the business. I was killing my business every day. And then the game plan comes out and my business went up 500% in a year. It was a little, little more than that. But I mean, so take whatever you make right now and whatever your job is, like the real estate people, you're talking about your real estate person, right? Yeah. So take whatever you make right now and multiply it by five this year. That'd be a pretty good year, right? That's what happened for us with this thing, this beach body thing. And people ask me every day, like, well, are you a trainer? I'm like, well, no, I'm a coach. I'm like I kind of do like what a trainer does, but I coach you. I go, you know, you, there's a, a great need for a trainer, and you know, if you're looking for this, you know, you need to do that. But what I do is, I'm, I'm here to empower you. I said, I'm, I'm also here to go work with your trainer and empower them so they have the nutrition tools. Because a lot of times, like as you know, as a trainer, uh, you know, the gyms might sell a few things, but they might not have everything, you know. And anyway, um, like I tell everybody, you know, I don't know. All I know is this thing's worth looking at. This thing's worth checking out. And and it's a thing where I like to get people to look at it from a different perspective. It's no different than if you're sitting on this side of the room it looks a certain way. If you're standing from over here, I'm looking at 200 people. And, and it's perspective. And um, anyway, so there you go. Perfect. So, <laughs> the reason, thank you. The reason we share our stories is that it, they're very powerful and everyone's story will inspire you in a different way. And I think that hearing what it's done for us, not just, hey, this is great, we've changed our lives and we make money, that's great, but this really means something to us, and I think each and every one of you will take something different out of it. So that's why we allocate so much time to actually letting you hear that part. Now, this, we've talked about this game plan, and, and what is this thing that you guys, you know, changed your business, but how and why, and will you just tell us about it, please? Because that's why we're here, is what I think a couple of you are probably saying. But, um, I want to get into that a little bit. And Arnold mentioned the sharing cycle. That's kind of the core of the game plan. We'll talk about the other steps and those are important things. But if you aren't finding and talking to people, like Mike said, this is a relationship business. It's all about building relationships. And the reason that we had success after the game plan was that we were out there building relationships, but we didn't have anything as far as a structure to follow through and follow up and guide us, we were just fire hosing people with information. And so what the game plan has done is it's simplified for us the process. So you really get to go out there, build relationships, you're talking to people, you're meeting people, so you're finding, you're making contacts, and what do you do with those contacts? Well, you're keeping track of them. You're writing them down, you're adding them to your distribution list, you're doing whatever you do, but you're sharing something with them. You're inviting them to listen to something or come to an event. And then you're following through and you're following up and you're asking them to join you, whether they wanna buy a product or they wanna come work out with you or they wanna join your business, you're sponsoring them. So we're gonna go through that in a little more detail right now. Yeah, so, um, let, me, let me interject one quick please. point. Uh, before you, know, you guys get further into this thing, please don't be the person that gets two years into this business and looks back and says, oh man, it didn't work, or I didn't cross something off my list, or I didn't make the money, or I didn't lose the weight, 
or whatever that may be, something off your dreams, your dream board, your why, however you want to look at that. So why I say that is please don't reinvent the wheel. Everybody brings something different to the table and you're going to put it in your own style. It's like taking a script and you make it your own and you deliver it in your own way. And I'm not saying go follow a script, but I'm saying is look at the system and look at who's successful and, and figure out, you know, is it something that Lee said that clicks and you're like, oh man, I'm just like her, I'm going to stay at home on. I need to, I'm going to follow what she's doing or if it's what I'm doing. For me, I met Pete Pena in Vegas, who's not on, I'm not part of his team, but he was the first millionaire in our business. And I thought, well, all I need to know is if that guy can do it, I can do it, right? And Bob, you're the same, same way, right? If that guy can do it, I can do it. And so listen to this, let this absorb and, and know that we can talk about how, the what and the how all day. Like if you make sure this is a big bullseye, the what, Team Beach Body, P90X, Insanity, Shakeology, all this stuff, right? How we share it, social media, person to person, maybe a fit club. It's all about why. Okay, so as you're listening to how to invite, how to follow through and do these things, know that what's gonna take you across that threshold and go, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show up today. I'm gonna engage that person at the park. Like, I, I love being in that, that, you know, little rat race of life with my little kids and, you know, I'm at parent pickup and I coach two little league teams and in the, in the fall I coach a couple soccer teams and we run the Boy Scout troops. I signed up first as a coach because, uh, as a sports coach, because I'm like, ooh, if I coach, I can set the schedule and I can say what days the practices are and I'm like, then to make it easier, you know, to navigate. But it's the freedom of this that's allowed all of it, right? And so know that there's a system that works. We're about to lay it out and, you know, Take that and run. Make it your own, but don't go, you know, if you want to go down this path over here, that's fine. We can all be friends, but we're going down a successful path, and this is it. So here you go. Well, I thought we would get a little bit into the first step, but we created, not we, but Tommy Migrant, one of the top coaches. Swarm. Sorry? Swarm. Swarm. Woo! Swarm. Sorry. <laughs> Tommy. Woo! Uh, we invited Tommy. He's at a wedding, but sorry. Uh, <laughs> He created a system that was really easy to duplicate, and it's it's not it's not rocket science. But for those of you that weren't having success, follow the system, and we handed it out. It's a five-step challenge group invitation process. It's right there on page one in your packet, right after the game plan. And we're just going to talk a little bit about it, not verbatim, so you have it to take home. But Mike and I are going to share with you how we do the finds and the invites and the shares. What what does it look like for us? So uh, for me, a lot of uh, the invite process, I, I like Mike said, I'm a mom. I stay at home with my kids, but I do beach body. So for me, it's very natural to want to help those like me. You know, I had my transformation after I had a child. I went and had another child. I was able to transform again. And people were amazed. Like, well, what are you doing? How are you doing this? And, and I get new moms all the time. Well, you don't have four kids. I don't look like that. And that's my, that's my opener, right? Well, I, you know, what do you want? How can, I, how can I help you? Like, I'm listening, I'm always listening. So for me, I'm inviting people because I'm just aware and I use my surroundings to, to listen for people who are interested in getting more fit and getting healthy. So for me, the invite really comes from talking to people. It's being friendly, smiling, and engaging. And I know that if I do that 10 times a day, I might make two contacts a day. And that's my goal is to to find two new people every day. If we set that as our goal and we come out with two or three or one or three, we're gonna hit 10 to 15 people a week and then we can move on from inviting. You have to create a following of people. And in the beginning, we use our warm markets and we talk to our families and friends. And when we're done, some of us stop. And if you don't wanna kill your warm market off, <laughs> there's a good way to, to do this. Yeah. Think about it like this. If you're a first year med student and you're gonna go do open heart surgery, you're gonna kill that guy. Right, he's gonna die. That's what happens, okay? And that's basically a new coach in the business as they go out to go share this with somebody. And, and so for me, like if you ever read, anybody ever read the book Failing Forward, John C. Maxwell? I feel like that book was written about me, not to be narcissistic, but like it, it, it I'm going, oh my gosh, I failed in this, I failed in that, but I studied the failure and I learned like what happened. And so if you look at where the failure is in this business, it's first 30 days. It's when I go tell you, I say, oh, hey, you know, here's Beachbody, you know, P90X and Sandy and Shakeology, blah, blah, blah. And, and you could turn around to this guy and you could tell him everything about that. And then he's going to give you one of the common, common 10 or 12 objections. Oh, uh, I work out at the gym. Oh, I do Jenny Craig. I do Weight Watchers. I already have P90X. Oh, my brother in law burned me a copy. Oh, I hate working out at home. Oh, uh, is this a network market? Oh, is this a pyramid? Oh, uh, you know, right? You, there's the same common objections that we all get. It's just learning how to have fun with that. 
And that's kind of where the conversation begins. Okay, so in the invite process, I don't run around to have a P90X conversation with everybody. Yes, I pretty much always have a P90X shirt on somewhere. You know, it's like, I, got, I don't know how many conversations I got in the elevator last night and here between the military guys and the wrestling teams, coaches. Like, it's like a feeding frenzy. It's been awesome. I'm gonna hang out at this hotel. I'm gonna find events and just hang out and wear a shirt. But, but, but I use that conversation. It's like military guys, you know, I thank them for their service. And I'm like, hey, do you guys realize like we have a program, you know, I know most of the military is using our stuff because I'm coaching a big military group of people. I've got a Navy team SEAL 6, I've got the orthopedic surgeon from the Navy SEALs, I've got squids, I've got army guys, I've got pretty much every branch. I go, but I just love to help people. And I don't know if you know this, but like you can get my, you can get a coach account like me and it's free. You're military, you're out to duty. I'm like this was our way to say thank you. And he's like, really? I can get, like, what do I get? I'm like, you get 25% off all your stuff, number one. But number two, you know, if you if you want an opportunity to learn how to make some extra income, or you want to help your platoon, or you want to reach out, you know, there's a way for you to make some extra money. And if you're busy and they're sending you all over the world, great. Assign you can assign that account to your spouse. And he's like, are you kidding me? I said, no. This was a program that we instituted with Beachbody. I'm kind of surprised, you know, they haven't passed this word around more in the military. But you can be the guy to pass that around. So I'm speaking to him, to him, about him. It's not about me. It wasn't about P90X. It was how's this going to benefit you. Because it has nothing to do with me. This training today is for you, right? I went to this training, Lee went to this training, Melanie, Tom, we were all at that first game plan in October 09 at the Ritz Carlton in Dana Point for free. Mind you, you can qualify to go to all those big game plans, the big annual leadership event for free and the other the vacations, but you have to find out what the person wants and needs. So when you're in this invite process, it's just discovery, right? I, I, Melanie, do you run around saying, you know, dying to talk about P90X and it's Andy? Like, you, no, you, you're there to have a conversation. You get to just know somebody a little bit and not be weird or throw up on them. Like, you talk about the fire hose. That's why I don't have any, anybody left from before October of 2009. That's also why I have no family and friends from growing up doing this, this business. I'm just now getting my friends to come around and say, can I get in that challenge group? I've been watching on Facebook, and, man, these transformation pictures are amazing. So, so when we brought the Beachbody Challenge in, it's actually an easy way for us to work with the people who have the interest in changing their lives. So some people want to get healthy and fit, and some people want to make money. And we kind of, as the coach or as the, the guide, we get to discover what it is that they want. And when someone wants to get healthy and fit, we say, great, you know, why do you want to do that? And help us understand that, because then we're set up to hold them accountable for their reasons. Not, why didn't you show up? Why haven't you bought your product yet? But really, you told me that you wanted to make a change because you couldn't ride the ride at the amusement park. It made you upset, and that is an emotional decision, like Arnold said. If it's an emotional decision, somebody is going to enroll for their emotion, and they're going to move forward for that very reason. Yeah, and, and like anything that somebody buys, I mean, anytime you've been standing on a car lot or when you bought that house, people buy on emotion, but they justify with facts. So if you want to tear apart the psychology of a deal, you bought the house because, I mean, how many times, anybody, especially the, the realtors in the room, oh, God, I love this house. It's incredible. I've got to have it. You don't even know why, you're drawn to it. There's something about it, there's that connective tissue. Think about this, there's 70,000 Beachbody coaches. Okay, there's Beachbody.com, there's Sports Illustrated, there, here, I'm trying to hand you this. The, the, uh, <laughs> your shirt, look, you look fabulous, this is not you. you. Um, they, can buy beach, they can buy this stuff from wherever. They're buying it because of you, because of you. The part about learning how to share your story, yes, you have an awesome story, share it, okay? It, it, when, when you get, you know, like uh, I was at some place, I was, I don't know, I was with somewhere, I was with Tommy Weiger, I don't remember where we were, and, and somebody's like, yeah, but you lost 110 pounds. Yeah, but you have business experience. And, I, and I'm like, oh, let me take that one. Like a business experience, I closed over $200 million in real estate deals. A 26-year-old kid, when he's 25, kicked my butt. He earns me by double, Josh Spencer, Canton, Ohio. He was 25, number one coach in the company. And guess what? In 2011, the number one coach in the company, was a guy he trained, who's a full-time orthodontist, who has three practices, five kids, volunteers at his church, coaches Little League, and Josh, at 25, enlightened Wayne Wyatt, who, if anybody knows Wayne, the guy's just a specimen of, of awesomeness, right? The guy, I mean, just an amazing, he and Anita are like the nicest people ever. And, it's, and you know, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy, but a 26-year-old kid, guy, I shouldn't call him a kid, did that. But also, I mean, he's, and he created that on, for Wayne, Wayne created it on the side. Wayne works part time. I mean, he loves yeah, his totally job. Part-time. He's not going to give it up. It's in and out of clients and in and out of kids. He built a number, the number one business in the United States last year. 
Yeah, so I mean, it, you know, it's, it's when you get into this process, you figure out how to make it your own, but you realize that, that you don't prejudge anybody. I thought, oh, I got all this business experience. It didn't matter. People don't care how much you know, they just wanna know how much you care, right? And so if you lead with your heart, if you get into the part where you're sharing from the heart, and you're going, you know, the guy sat, sat just about next to you on that plane that, that had to be well over 400 pounds that was just dyingly uncomfortable in his seat because he couldn't fit in it. I mean, my heart goes out to him, and I'm not going to sit here and talk about P90X. I just wanted to share about maybe a friend. So you know, man, I know somebody has been in the same spot, and, and I know how to help you. I've got the way. I've got a way. I don't have the way. And, and what's more important about that is we, we want to help, but we can't help someone until they're ready. So for you as individuals to know your story and to continue to just be you, to share what you're doing and your life and how you're making changes and how things are working for you. And depending on how you do that, if you do it in person or you do it in social media, if you can be genuine about your business and, and why you're doing it, and not even that it's business, just that you're working out every day, you're drinking shakes, you're being healthy, you're playing with your kids, you're going to sports events, you're taking vacations, and that's your life. People are following you because you're interesting. But you're interesting because you care. You're making comments on their pages. You're being general, genuine. You're meeting people and talking to them about them. And when that happens, when they're ready to learn about what you do, they will ask you. I've had people that have followed me, just friends, acquaintances from college, high school, from jobs, past, that all of a sudden they turn around and go, hey, I just got that P90X, or I'm thinking about buying P90X. You do that, don't you? They don't even know what they're asking me, right? They just want to hear that I've done it and I've had results, or who knows what. They open the door, though, and I say, absolutely, I've done it. You're, you're thinking about getting it. You know, why are you interested in it? And, well, I can't get to the, you know, once they tell me their reason, I can hold them accountable and give them a free account and coach them, help them buy it. A lot of them come to me, they already bought it. And I know we can take that, like Mike said, that's one of the biggest objections. You run into people, you tell them what you do, I already own that program, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You, you, what do you want out of it? But it's most important that we support them regardless of where they bought their program. Because that's a person for you. That's somebody that needs what you have. You give them a free account, you know, they might, they're gonna, they're gonna become your best referral source if they have success. Think of it like that. You can support somebody to get results, and that's why the challenge is, is a really easy way for those of you that haven't had success so far and you're kind of wondering, what can I do? How do I get this going? Be a coach. You help some people. How do you find those people? You be authentic. You kind of look for people that want help, but you put it out there, and when they're ready, they're going to come to you. And invite them to join a challenge. And, and in the steps, you'll see you, you can ask them why they're interested and find out that why. But then it's about setting a schedule and saying, I'm going to do a challenge on this date, backing up the date, saying, I want, if you're interested, here's what you need to do, and here's when you need to do it by. Because the yeah, urgency. So, so, yeah, so on number one, you know, when you talk about invite, Think about this. If you're out and about and it's person to person and you want to know how is this going to come up, let's just start where we don't, I don't want to glaze over something that's pretty important. Because really number one and two, that's like the meat of the subject. Let's just sorry about that. So in how to invite, like when I say I wear a P90X shirt out, if I didn't have that logo wear on, the, the guy that looks like he's built like you uh, in the garage, or garage, in the uh, elevator last night, military guy, oh man, are you, are you with the wrestling group? What's the P90X thing? I said, no, I'm like, are you with the wrestling group or are you with the military guys? He's like, no, the military guys. I said, oh man, you know, then I went through the thing. The logo got me in the conversation. P90X is famous. If you're not wearing a P90X shirt, I mean, I don't even know what to say. That's like step number one. And, and you know, when, when, I got, when I got in the, in the cab from the airport over here, the gal asked me why I was in town. She was just making chit chat, right? Usual cabbie chit chat. And I said, oh, you know, we're doing this event. I'm going to speak at this cool event. There's all these great people coming in. And, you know, who knew Madison has this awesome market going on in, in the surrounding areas? She goes, oh, what's the company? I said, oh, it's, uh, I work with Beachbody, the P90X people. I said, you've probably seen us on TV. She goes, no, I don't watch TV. I said, oh, well, our progress, I said, our programs are, like, super famous. I mean, most of the military is using them. Most are pro sports, stay-at-home moms. I go, anyway, it, it's a ton of fun. I said, we're doing this business event. I said, so, you know, if you want to find a way to make some extra income, maybe it's your car payment, maybe it's uh, – you know, you just want to pay your visa bill. I don't know what it might be for you, but you should probably think, what's that going to be for you? And then, you know, if you like the thought, here's my card. Be happy to trade some contact info. It's like, oh my gosh, I'd love to make some extra money. I said, you know, I don't know if this event's for you. It's a brand, it's a coach training event. You're brand new, but I'd be happy to, you know. Boom. Anyway, you speak to them about 
what they need. The, the logo just gets you in conversation most of the time. If it doesn't get you in conversation, or say you're not wearing a logo, I'm wearing a Wisconsin shirt, well, you know, so I make chit chat with somebody, and, and it's the classic thing of uh, uh, learning how to make this come up in conversation, okay? Uh, it's pretty simple. If you, if I, if I run into you, and maybe it's the, the common greeting that we all get, hey, how you doing, hey, what's up, how's everything going, what's happening, whatever, right? We get this every day, 10 times a day, unless you walk around like this, and you don't want to see people, and oh, so there's another tip one. Tip number one, make eye contact with yes. people, and smile. Every conversation starts with a smile and a hello. If you're not being personable, light up, okay? And then have a little fun with this, and it's just being nice to people. You never know what it's gonna be if it's getting the door for somebody, whatever it is. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, the snow is awesome. Oh, I live here, snow sucks. <laughs> I'm from California, I thought it was awesome. I'm like driving, I stole Kevin's car and I was doing donuts in front of the Sears parking lot yesterday, so I'm like, <laughs> days of thunder, lines were shoot out of my mouth. And, and it, so, so I made chit-chat, like, like Tara and I uh, and Lisa, we went to the mall yesterday and we were just kind of shopping around, we went to Wisconsin shirt, and we we're shopping around the mall and I, we chit-chatted with the gals that had the bungee jump thing, and, which I did the bungee jump thing for four minutes straight. I uh, chit-chat with a guy that owns the new nutrition shop, he was a collegiate wrestler, Division I, uh, he tried out, he didn't make the Olympics, but we had this conversation, we get to know him, right? Uh, who else did we talk to in the mall yesterday there? The GNC guy, oh yeah, the GNC guy. And, and, and the con I'm like, you know, this guy's super fit, and I said, hey, so you know, how long have you been working here? He goes, two years. I'm like, so you, you dig working at the mall? He goes, yeah, 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 it's the mall. I'm doing a double. I'm on a lot of caffeine right now. And I'm like, <laughs> like, how's that working out for you? You know, and so, so then, you know, and it's planting seeds. And, and you've got to be able to think on your feet a little bit. And, but this is number one. This is the crucial part. So, I mean, so I'm thinking, okay, well, he works at GNC. It's a conflict of interest. He can't sell our stuff working at this store. I'm done, right? I'm not done. I go, hey, so, so all these people come in here and ask for your advice, right? He goes, oh yeah, every day. I said, you should write a blog. He goes, I should? Yeah, well, have you ever considered writing a blog? No, well, I'm considering it now. Like, why would I write a blog? I thought you should ask, Dan. You should write a blog because then all these people that come in can follow you. You can give them a nutrition tips on your blog and you can blog about stuff at GNC. I said, I just bought protein powder from you because I just came here and I didn't have any. And yeah, I mean, you're fascinating, you're interesting, you have this story, you need to share your story. I said, are you gonna work here for the rest of your life? And when he got done laughing, he, he, goes, he goes, well, you know, heck no, I'm not, in other words, he wasn't going to work there forever. Great, set the table with that blog, establish relationships with these people, because obviously GNC is not going to give you their mailing address. That would be awesome, but that's not going to happen. And so, you know, and then you, as you turn Beachbody coach, you can blah, 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 right? So I'm just setting the table. I had to step in Dan's shoes and be empathetic and go, ooh, what's it look like from right here? Okay, it's not about me, it was about Dan. It was about the wrestling, collegiate wrestler guy. It was about the two gals with the bungee jump thing that all they do is travel to malls and fairs. Hey, how, do you like traveling? Yeah, you know, I'm 50, I'm getting kind of tired of it. Well, that's interesting, right? And so you learn how to make it come up. Another great way to make it come up is when you ask the, hey, how you doing? I love this one. And my oldest brother did this forever and, and my oldest brother's kind of socially unacceptable and he's this guy, he's been through cancer front to back and then he gained a ton of weight. He's like, we call him the Mayor of Morro Bay. He's, Great guy, but it's, he asked everybody, hey, what have you been doing for fun? And so, as much as I hated that, then I, I was in a conversation one day, and the guy was just sitting there, stoic, quiet. I couldn't get anything out of him. And it was kind of just like a challenge. And I'm going, and we're sitting there, I think it was like at a, I don't know, it was like a doctor's office. Somewhere I'm sitting, I'm gonna have to face this guy for like the next 30 minutes until the, somebody gets called, him or me. And uh, I say, hey, so what have you been doing for fun? He goes, fun? I go, You're not having any fun? I go, like, you've been, what have you been doing? What have you been doing for fun? Uh, I go, so instead of leaving that, I'm like, hey, so you've been like playing tennis, playing, riding bikes, like, what have you been doing for fun? Uh, <laughs> like, you're telling me you haven't had any fun? Like, really? I'm like, man, you know what I've been doing? And because so, his guy was not going to offer a word, right? He's stoic, John Wayne sitting there on Valiant. And I go, I go, hey, I've been doing that P90X thing on, you know, on TV, uh, PX90? And he goes, oh, PX90. Yeah, they hit that. <laughs> okay, okay. And so, I said, yeah, yeah. And boom, he let up. Oh, yeah. It was that one little connective tissue, right? What have you been doing for fun? Okay, so as goofy as that sounds, you just, and I'm not saying run up to every person, hey, what have you been doing for fun? Hey, what have you been doing for fun? Oh, really? She didn't have any fun. What have you been doing for fun? Like, that's totally hokey. <laughs> it's just learning how to interact with people and having fun with it. And I don't care if this is on Facebook or Twitter or, or whatever you know, social media you're using, you're engaging somebody and having a conversation. Like Chad Noel, I met Chad Gutierrez. They were originally from Dallas, originally from Chicago, right? And then Dallas, because of work. I met him at my fit club in Bakersfield. 
he was just staying at the hotel. He was on business there for a couple days. And it was, you know, okay, so what are you doing here? Oh, I'm traveling. I work for the railroad, blah, blah, blah. And uh, great. So, you know, do you, where are you from? Well, I'm from Dallas. Okay. I got three kids. My oldest daughter is into figure skating. I say, oh, man, that's expensive. Like, I played hockey, and I knew what ice time was, at least where we live. It's, you know, hot, so it's really expensive. And then he said, oh, well, you know, and, and you know, my work makes me travel, and so I'm gone, you know, two and a half, three weeks out every month. I'm like, man, I don't know how you do it. That's a lot of time out of the house. Remember this? And because and, this was like this defining moment where I think nobody had ever said this to him before. And I just, I'm like, I just, I don't, I'm not knocking your job. I just don't know how you do it. Like, I, I just want to be around my kids all I possibly can. Like, that's my why. It's these kids that I just want to, you know, I want to coach the teams and hang out and play and youthful hurt. And he calls me a few weeks later. He's like, okay, I got to do this. What do I do? I go, okay, great. So then he gets signed up. And then, Chad, what happens with uh, when you dig into some personal development? I think you listened to Craig, Aldi, Craig Holiday's audios, and you read, like, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, I, I did all the, the weekly uh, webinars and uh, seminars, all the training. So, long story short, is uh, I decided, you know, okay, this is for me, but I took the training, applied it at my other job, and uh, I got a big promotion out of it. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so, he gets, so he gets into some personal development because of getting introduced to Beachbody at a fit club and he's a random hotel guest at the deal, right? He gets this huge promotion at work. They move him from Dallas back up to Chicago area where both your families are from, yeah. right? So that's been a good deal, Noel, for, you know, kids getting to see grandparents, right? Now you guys have all this business blossoming and he gets this big promotion. It's like, you never know what's gonna happen out of this. All I know is that we all have three shots to change somebody's life. We have world-class fitness, nutrition, and the business. One or all those is gonna change somebody's life. And like Lee said, not everybody's gonna say yes. Okay, but when I hear a no, it's just a not right now. It's a timing thing. You know what I mean? Like when you talk to your uncle, you didn't sign up on the, oh, you know And Sandy, sweet, I'm on, let's do it. You took your time, you checked it out. Called him up, okay, I'm ready. But there was a gap in there, you know what I mean? He's probably watching. You were watching him or there was something going on, why he's, you didn't do not, it? He's not modeled. No, no, I was just pointing to you. Oh. Yeah, if I could say, man, wow, I just want to. No, that's messed up, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. No, I mean, I just, why, I just, I've known Darren as a trainer, and he got out of the business. And you know, like overhead is crazy when you own your own facility. Good point. You know that managing trainers and all that. And I was just when he told me that, I'm just like, I'm watching the paradigm shift. You're watching. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to be sticking around forever. And I'm really <laughs> sick of waking up. It's six o'clock in the damn morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah, clap for that. Who likes to sleep in? <laughs> like you were ready. You made a decision when you were ready. And so what I think we do as coaches often is we say, oh, that person's not interested. And we just close the door and kick them aside. And that's not the way we should do this business. I mean, we should just be building relationships and working because when people are ready, they're gonna come around. Yeah. And it, it could be anything that triggers that. We don't know. They might say no to you, and two weeks later, something happens. They lose their job, they wanna to come to you. They can't go to the gym anymore because their husband's schedule changes and they can't get out of the house. I mean, that, there's yeah, things that happen all the, time. all the time. So just put it out there and keep putting it out there, but when you do hear somebody that's interested, it's important to follow up. And what Mike was saying is, if you can get to their why, and you really understand what they want, you can. You can help them and support them for them, not for you. So let me give you one quick example, and then I'm gonna let Lee run for the next couple points. I spoke at this PE teachers convention for State of California in Pasadena last week, and uh, there, my girls had a booth there as well. And so when I was hanging out at the booth, we had this super busy booth, all these PE teachers coming up, because a lot of them are using our products in their classes. And like when I met the guys that were some PE teachers in San Francisco, they have one PE teacher per 10 schools. Okay, they don't even have a teacher for a school. It's one for 10 schools. And so he has to empower other <laughs> teachers to be able to teach PE class, right? So they're, they're leaning on, you know, everybody's kid's teacher to do this. And so they love our stuff because it's simple, you know, video, and they can show them how to modify, and they've got choices and all that stuff. And so I'm not connecting with this guy a whole lot other than that he loves our programs. He's clearly didn't want anything to do with business. No big deal. This guy bumps into me. I turn around. And the guy, it looks like Mr. Surfer Guy, which turns out he is. And he looked probably like mid to late 40s. He's so healthy and fit, he's actually 58 years old. And when he tells me his name, I'm thinking his name, I'm like, this is this pro surfer's name. I'm like, Are you, were you a professional surfer? I'm like, I don't, I'm not a surfer, I never even stood on a surfboard. I live two hours from the beach. 
And he goes, he goes, well, you know, my son is, and you know, he's 31, and he's this guy. And I'm like, you know, I've heard these names. Well, so we start chit chatting about surfing, and then, and, you know, yeah, I'm a PE teacher, and he happens to be from the town that my main coach is from. This guy does P90X. He's done P90X to stay in shape so he can surf, right? Then he does P90X before school, and any students or teachers that want to do it with him can do it with him. He's on his fourth round. They use it for PE, and he has a fit club at night. So they have a, then they open it up so parents, students, faculty, staff, they can come in and do this workout. He's a non-coach. Not only is he a non-coach, he's never heard of the coaching business. He doesn't know anything. All he knows is he, bought, he has one copy of P90X he's bought, and he's helping everybody get fit and healthy. And he's obviously not getting paid for it, right? So as I'm bringing up the business, I'm getting that big F you. It's that big, hey, thanks, man, but I, I love teaching. <laughs> I got you. I, he's almost literally doing this. Stay away from me. Somebody brought up business, the big B word, like it's a bad word. I'm going, to, okay, so I have fun with this. I don't walk away like that's where a lot of people think, oh, the conversation's over. Dang, that guy would have been awesome. Oh, if he only knew, if he could only see what we've seen, right? That's the perspective. So I said, so, so you're teaching still? He goes, oh, I can retire right now. I don't need to. I love teaching. I got the, I, <laughs> okay. I go, what do you really want to do? I go, let's take teaching out of the conversation. What do you want to do? What would you do right now? He's like, go surfing. I said, so, you know, where do you surf? What's your favorite spot? I said, Alzuma Beach, blah, blah. I said, where do you want to go? He goes, oh, like anywhere? Said, yes, anywhere. Like you got to pull it out of him sometimes, right? He wanted to go to Costa Rica. Okay, well, I've had enough conversations with people who know that if you ever talk to somebody who's passionate about surfing, they know the 10 spots in the world that they want to go surf. It's like that old movie, Endless Summer. These guys know it, they know where they want to go, they just don't have the money to go, to, 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 right? They don't have the money to get there. So either what you're doing today in life is getting you to your goals, or it's not, right? And most of the time those dreams have shrunk to match your dollars. So he's telling me about this place he wants to go surf, then he gets a picture out on his phone, and if anyone's ever seen one of those stand-up paddle boards, they're these gigantic surfboards that are like, for me to lead, they're almost hard to carry, they're so gigantic, right? They have little wheels for them and stuff. This guy's on a 21 foot tall wave. This guy's like six foot four, or six foot five, right? He's on a 21 foot wave on a stand up paddle board. I'm like, dude, are you freaking Larry Hamilton? Like, what the heck is that? That's not you. He goes, that's me. He's this big time surfer, right? I go, how cool would it be if you could get paid to go do what you'd love to do? He goes, are you kidding me? I know. I go, my friend Barbie Decker, we all went to France together. And when we got to France, Barbie's sitting here telling me and Lee about how she's been in Europe for three weeks and she's staying for two more weeks. I go, Barbie, I go, you know, you got an empire shirt on, right? You know Barbie. So here's PhD Barbie. Barbie was a college professor down in Texas, right? 13 years to get her PhD, and she's a beach body coach. Wouldn't touch the business in the beginning, just didn't want it. It was right. business. Classic thing. So, so she got perspective, and now she's almost a millionaire in this business, and, and deservedly so. But so I share with this guy Barbie's story. My story's not going to relate to this guy, right? I don't tell the, the guy that's 400 pounds about Nick Hussein, who went from scrawny to brawny. I don't tell the skinny guy about the weight loss story. You got to tell a story that's germane to them, right? And so I said, yeah, I said, my friend Barbie, she, you know, she was a PhD professor down in Texas. I go, you know, so we went to Europe, she's gone for five weeks. I said, Barbie, I don't know how you do it. Like how in the world, five weeks? Like how's, what's, how, what's going on with your business? You're not worried about that? She goes, are you kidding me? She looked at me like I was stupid. And I'm going, okay, here comes the aha moment where it's gonna be me. She goes, well, I'm gonna an hour a day on a Wi-Fi. I'm set, right? She lives her lifestyle. She still works out, she still uses Shakeology. She's just living her lifestyle, and it's an awesome lifestyle. It's interesting. Like, everybody has an interesting story. And I kind of think of everybody's stories in terms of a movie. Like, if I were writing a movie about you, what's your story? How do I make a preview that makes you interesting? Right? And you have to think about that for yourself. How am I interesting? What do I have to share with somebody? How am I going to do that? And so when I shared Barbie's story with this guy, I said, you know, I said, I know the social media plan. I know where the instructors are. I'm like, I'm not going to teach it, but I can point you in the right direction. Right? That's really what an expert coach is. We point people in the right direction. I can point you in the right direction with a social media plan. And what if you what if you could live your life surfing around the globe, you doing our workouts to stay fit, to go do what you're really passionate about doing? I said, you're just like what Tony Hork talks about. Tony's a big time snow skier, like super big time snow skier, right? And he's like, hey, these workouts are your indoor workouts for your outdoor life. Go get outdoors. And this guy, all this guy's thinking about is, oh my gosh, I could be traveling around the world, I can make money doing this, I can retire from the job they already want me to retire from. And I'm gonna get and I'm gonna make more money doing it. You just gotta speak to them. That's powerful. I thought we would take a few minutes. You have the invites process. Basically, what it's gonna tell you is it to find the people and use the scripts. 
but I thought what we would like to do is really handle or entertain some of your objections and how we would handle them. I mean, I think that's something that we all encounter different objections. So if someone would like to raise their hand um, in talking to somebody, whether it's for product or for business, tell us, um, tell me your name first. Debbie. Okay, I'm gonna give you the mic, hold on. Um, that's okay. <laughs> Um, I'm sure a lot of people hear this, but when you bring up the business, then, oh, I don't have the money to get started, or I, I can't put money into something like that. The money objection. Yeah, the money objection. Okay. Does anybody ever get the time objection? I don't have time for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Time. <laughs> time and money are number one and number one. <laughs> but there's more. So what else? What's another objection? Let's just shout it out. What's an objection? I just, uh, money. like, like the clients, when they're on Shakeology, then, you know, they start getting it every month and that little $120 comes out and then it's like, I don't know if Shakeology is worth $120 a month. And are they not using it every day so it's stacking up and they've got too much well, to cancel? Well, they are using it every day, but, you know, in the beginning, even though you explain it, sometimes when you get okay. that bill. I got a fix for that. Okay. Okay, what else? Here, they're more Shakeology. They, so, they won't even fight. That's money. Okay, so time and money. What else besides time and money? I don't want to drink my calories. You what? They don't want to drink Okay, so a food objection. They don't. Uh, they don't like shakes, right? Brady. That's right. I can get. Not a salesperson. That's a good one. I have to work out at a gym. I can't. I'm not you got to be social at a gym. What you have? I can get like drinks. So that's all right. Okay, great. Okay, so pyramid, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. Noel, what was that? Pyramid. Yeah, it's a pyramid. I'm a CEO. You're all my senior VPs. You're my VPs. The rest of you are in sales. The rest of you are staff. Nicole. Who takes all the vacations in that situation? I can get that bootleg. I don't have to pay for it. Right, so that's like Craigslist and download. Somebody's going to download it. Somebody's going to rip it off. I don't steal from liquor stores either, but that's, that's what I say to them sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so, so if you think about that, that pyramid thing, let's start with the ugly one, right? Elf in other room. Is it a pyramid? Well, a pyramid's against the law in the 50 states. That's money changing hands for no reason whatsoever. And that's why I tell them that usually shuts it down. A pyramid is against the law. That's money changing hands for no product whatsoever. You know, we're here to change people's lives. So well, it's networking then, isn't it? That would here's what it is. This is a d direct selling. It's MLM. That's what they say. Okay, so that goes in. That's this is all one topic. But if they, but I'm responding when you say, oh, it's not a pyramid because of this. Oh, well, it's multi-level marketing. You know what it is? The net result of what we do is a whole lot of people have become more fit and healthy. If I can help you get your cholesterol down. If I can help you have healthier blood levels, or if you want to look better at swimsuit season, whatever that is, and actually I don't use the word you, I'm very particular about the pronoun game, uh, and, and you guys want to think about this as you're speaking to people, because I don't want to be threatening to somebody, because if I assume you want to lose weight, and you're offended by that, I'm definitely cooked. Oh, right? Man. So I say, some people want to lose weight, some people want to look better at swimsuit season. Some people. Okay? So when it comes to the, because this is very, no, those are against the law, are you kidding me? We're the P90X people. And I say it like that. Now what if I said it like this, the same words. Oh, we're the P90X people. We're good. <laughs> not, right, not happening. Something you have to respond with inflection. You have to, it's your posture. It's belief. And your belief. Right, you either have to believe more in what you're doing than they believe in their no, or you lost. Lost. What I found too is that many people are coming to you and they're saying that because they've been burned by a previous situation. And they say, ew, it's an MLM, and they turn their head, and I ask them, Oh, have you been involved with an MLM before? And nine out of 10 or 99% of the time they say, yeah. And I say, well, tell me about what you experienced. Cause I want to find out what didn't work for them. And when they tell me, well, I had to buy all this product. Well, now I have, you know, it's only $14 a month and you, you know, you don't have to buy product. You can sell, product. you can help people. And, it, and I can get into any objection that they have if I find out why they're questioning why they, this business, because it's an MLM. Oh, well I tried it and I'm not a salesperson. Oh, you don't do, I don't do sales. Great, anybody that has the hang up on sales, let's replace that word sell with help. I'm just here share. to help people. Help people and share. I just want to help you. You want to help people? Well, of course I would want to help people. Well, what if you can get rewarded for that? That would be great, right? But if you start with their why a little bit, if you get a little bit into what, what it is that's germane to them, you know, if I'm at the park and it's a stay at home mom, she's, her kids are playing at the park, you know, you kind of have an idea of the situation. You know, the, the one that's maybe a little more difficult could be on social media, but if you're asking the right questions, you'll get it out of them. Um, and so what was, the, what was another objection? Time. 
Okay, I have a good time talk. There's, and I don't give this talk with everybody, but I mean, the mindset of this is, like last time I checked, we all get 24 hours in a day. You don't get 23 and I get 24, right? What are you gonna do with your time? Okay, and I think about prolific leaders or people in our history, I don't care if this was Mozart or Beethoven or Einstein or Shakespeare. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but Shakespeare is responsible for like 10% of the common sayings in the English language, one guy. And I'll say these things, and you think about it. What did John F. Kennedy do? What did Malcolm X do? What did Martin Luther King do? What did these famous people in our history who changed their life as we know it today, what did they do with their 24 hours a day? Now what are you going to do with yours? All right, and it, you feel that, and it hits you, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing anything with mine. I'm watching reruns of Law and Order. You know, I can tell you 50 things about reality TV shows. Yeah, that, that, you might want to think about that. But, but on the time thing, basically what I'll do is, is, obviously that's kind of a hardcore thing to be able to say. I say it in jest, because usually I would only respond that way if it's somebody I know. If it's not somebody you know, I'll share other people's stories. And so the, the first one that, that I got when I got involved with this was Tracy Morrow uh, from California, right? She's up to a lot of people in here. She had four kids, and then she goes to Africa and adopts two more kids. And so when I meet her, I'd heard she's a very successful coach, made tons of money uh, in this business, and she's probably one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet. Absolutely. Right? And so I'm like, Tracy, I just don't understand. I mean, you have six kids. I don't even know how you get your kids to school on time. I'm like, I'm the youngest of six, and that drove my parents to drink. I don't and you did this on purpose. <laughs> right? No, I'm, that's what I literally said that to her. And, and so she and her husband, Casey, are kind of laughing, and she goes, Mike, she goes, I don't go out to do business. I just do business when I'm out. And so I'll share her story with somebody else, and then they go, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's all your goal is in these conversations. And I know I'm not, I mean, this is going a little bit long on, on how to handle a specific objection, but instead of giving you a script, it's giving you a mindset. And it's giving you an ability to find these other stories within the, the network and learn how to share other people's stories to combat these little things that people are saying. Like they're doing a sniff test on you, right? It's like Shakeology. What, do you, what are the common objections, Lee, when somebody's, when you're pitching somebody Shakeology? Oh, I don't need that, I eat well. Okay, and then it's, I eat well, does it taste good? This is what they're thinking. I already eat good food. There's nothing wrong with food in the United States, is there? I, I, uh, <laughs> I drink my calories. I don't want to drink my calories. I can't afford it. Money? Um, I don't need it. Does it taste like dog food? Is it going to fill me up? These are the common things that they're thinking. You thought this when whoever it is, whomever it is, pitched you on this. Okay, so be empathetic to them. It takes empathy to sell anything, and all you're doing is selling somebody on an idea. I don't know if it's for you, I just know it's worth checking out. I don't know what it's gonna do for you, but here's what I like about it. That's one of the best things you yes. could ever say. Say that again, know. let's write that down. I don't know what it's gonna do for you, but here's what it does for me, or here's what I like about it. And, and you're not selling, you're sharing. And, you know, selling is transferring your beliefs. If you believe in the product, and you believe that it's not expensive, you can sell it. I, I was telling Linda earlier this morning, I had a really hard time selling Shakeology in the beginning. Well, one, I was pregnant and I wasn't drinking it because I was ignorant and didn't think I could. Then two, I started drinking it and it took me a while to like it and I thought it was expensive. So I was a, a terrible sharer and seller of Shakeology because I wasn't the product of the product and I didn't believe in it. And you know what, I couldn't sell it. I remember telling Natalie, um, one of our corporate people, like, I just can't sell this stuff. And something changed. Well, the people around me didn't change. It was me that changed. I started drinking it, and I started believing in it, and I started sharing it. I became a top Shakeology seller in the network. I mean, funny thing, nothing changed around me. I didn't move. I didn't meet new people. I just changed my beliefs. And that's, that's something that you might not think anything of, but it's think everything. about it. It really is everything. So in, in, in thinking a little bit ahead of what that person's kind of anticipating, does it taste like dog food? Does it taste good? Is it expensive? Do I want to do this every day? Is it going to fill me up? I don't like to drink my calories. Okay, it could taste like sewer water. I'm going to drink it every day because I know the health benefits. Okay, but it's it's uh, uh, so say I don't know. Say you just ask me. You know, we're making chit chat at the grocery store. We're staying in the produce aisle, and you know maybe I'm drinking a shake. And I'm like, oh hey, what's that? I like, go, oh, it's this awesome meal replacement I have. And this stuff, oh, like it tastes so good. My kids ask for it every day. It totally fills me up. And you know, at four bucks a serving. Like how do you beat that? You know, it's cheaper than you know the common meal, right? So I, I don't know what the restaurant's for but you guys have Chipotle's here, right? Okay, so a burrito at Chipotle is nine bucks with tax with a glass of water, right? It's like 1,200 calories, it's healthy food, it's non-GMO, but it's still over 1,000 calories. You never should eat the whole thing unless you're you know, built like this guy and you just slam the weights for a freaking hour and a half, right? <laughs> then maybe you do, but I just can envy. So, uh, 
but but it's that thing where you go, like, you know, I just I just overcame the objections before they even came out of her mouth. My it tastes so good. My kids ask for it every day. Everybody, anybody that has kids, know you can't snooker a kid. You just can't, right? And it fills me up. And hey, at four bucks a serving, like, it's not one hundred twenty dollars a bag. Don't ever say that again. Strike that from your vocabulary. Gone, right? Jedi mind trick. It's gone. Mm -hmm. It's four bucks a serving. Three bucks in the coach, but it's only four bucks a serving. Only. Use that word. But only you hear how I'm saying it? It's only four bucks a serving, Bob. I'm saying it not with, I'm ramming it down your throat. I'm just, oh, I, I just know that it's a with serving. strength. Like, then you say how much it is like it? That? Oh, it's, oh, it's really expensive. You might not think that, yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so on money. What's that? We're getting so, time on time? No, no, you're good. So, what, you guys have the five step process, and many of you have used it. What they're doing is they're really going into the nitty gritty of what you're going to run into once you send out the five step process. And I'm like, I'd like to, for you to talk about the why. Step two, the why. Okay. Why that's so important. I think that's important for them to know why that is important. Was I supposed to cover that GSR before lunch? No, no. Talk about the five step process okay. within the five step process. Why it is important for their why. So nine minutes. So on the why. So talk about the why. The why is so important. Knowing their why when they join the challenge group. Right. Why right. in the challenge group? Why for challenge group? And I'll address that Shakeology long-term deal in the midst of this. Um, the why in the challenge group. So I skipped over step two repeatedly through my tenure as a beach body coach. As much as I'm good at digging into a why, getting that guy to realize he wants to surf in Costa Rica and to break New Zealand and that island off the coast of Mexico and all these places he's telling me about. Um, if somebody hits me up on Facebook and says, okay, I'm ready, what do I do? I would send them the link and instructions how to buy specifically. You know, go to my site, blah, blah, blah. Click the box on the right side. I don't even just say click the box. Click the box that's on the right side, take the challenge. Dumb it down or simplify it up, however you look at that. And then, um, so I skipped right past that. So by, by engaging them in a question, hey, thanks for reaching out about my challenge. That's great. Um, you know, tell me about it. What do you want to get out of this? What are your goals? What would you like to achieve with this? Our mission, as we go out to share whatever, right? Shakeology, challenge packs, challenge packs are inclusive of all, or the coaching business and or, we're finding out what you want and need, okay? If I'm gonna sit here and take this front row and you're gonna be in my next challenge group, I need to find out what you individually want and need to get out of it, or how the heck can I help you? A challenge pack? Okay, I'm glad you asked, I'm sorry. A challenge pack uh, is a pack that comes with Shakeology HD, it comes with a workout of your choice, and a month of the club membership for free. Okay, so the, the club membership has the really cool customized meal plan, and they're doing a big revamp on the club membership. I know this is public news, so I can share that, right, a little bit. They're doing a big revamp. The club membership's cool, but it's gonna get all even. It's gonna get really cool. It'll make my fitness style look like a joke when they're done with it. In a nutshell, it's your fitness, your nutrition, and your support. And that's, it's, it's, yeah, a discount, a discount. it's a big discount, and it's, there's no shipping. Right, you get free shipping, you get 30 day trial membership to the club, and you get a discounted price. And if they sign up, to, they want to be a coach at the same time buying their challenge pack, they waive the sign up fee to be a coach. It's the same price whether it's retail or as a coach. And they also get a free coach. They get a free coach, okay? So, so the support aspect of it is that we're, we're helping people with their fitness and their nutrition, getting them into a small group. That's part of it is that we want to help them succeed, so we're going to group them together into a five-person group and put them on Facebook and really to support them best we, we want to understand their why. Yeah, so, so in getting to their why, you know, it, it's just, hey, what would you like to get out of this? What are your goals in joining my challenge group? I want to help you succeed, but I need to know where you want to go. You're built like a gymnast or a wrestler. I'm just curious, like, you want to compete again? Do you want to run? What do you want to do? Right, so you identify a little bit with them. Don't act stupid. I mean, I, I mean don't make crazy assumptions, but you got to speak to the person a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and you find out their goals and then you recap the goals. Great, that's awesome. So you wanna get fit, you wanna put on a little bit of muscle. You wanna look great at swimsuit season, you got a wedding coming up. And you know, and then you, if anybody's ever heard Tony Horton speak about, you know, don't go do this for a one day event. This is a rest of your life thing. It's not a 90 day thing, it's a, it's a rest of your life thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not a get ripped contest, it's just, hey, how did it change your life? And what it gives you too when you know this is that they suddenly drop off your group and you're supporting them day to day and they don't show up. You know their why. So when you're checking back in, you're saying, hey, what happened? You know, we miss you. We're wondering where you are. You know, you're working really hard. You want to be in that swimsuit for swimsuit season. What's going on? And then you're bringing that emotion back as to why they got involved. It's not like, 
you bought this, you said you were going to do it, you're not showing up. Now you're really getting to them for their emotions. So that's part yeah, of it. If you don't know their why, they just assume you're trying to sell more stuff. Okay, and also, here's a classic thing. That person that, say you hit me up on Facebook, okay, I'm ready, what do I do? And all I sent you is instructions with a link, and here's how to buy it. And then what happens if you don't? My next message is, hey, did you get it? I didn't see it come through. I want to make sure you land with me. Sometimes you land with the wrong coach. All they, all they think is they're thinking, you're just concerned about getting my money. You're just concerned about selling me something. If I know your why, I can go back to you and speak to you about your why. Hey, you have these goals. You really want these goals. You, you know, you have, since that last 10 pounds of baby weight, it's whatever that was that you shared with me. I know you didn't have a baby. But, <laughs> point to a guy for people who can't see. Uh, uh, no, that's good, you have to know their why. It's really important, and we want to drive that home. Uh, the next thing I want to just touch on is we call it, it's the Beachbody Challenge. It's a challenge pack, but the reason it's called a challenge pack is because when they commit to a, buying a challenge pack, they're committing to a goal of their health and fitness, and they're entering the Beachbody Challenge. Now, I don't know how many of you in the room, I know there's at least four of us, five of us in the room that have won a Beachbody Challenge transformation story. So when they get entered into the challenge, it's the opportunity to submit their success story upon completion of their program and win a monthly challenge. And when you win a monthly challenge, yes, you get $1,000, but then you're also progressing through. You can win a quarterly and annual contest, and at the end of the year, they're gonna pick winners to win $100,000. Two winners, a male and a female winner. And along the way, there's eight winners, there's eight every month. Or eight every month still? Yeah, eight every month. Different age categories, different. So you, every time you submit, and I know many of you are submitting every month, but if you've had a transformation, you need to enter the Beachbody Challenge. And that's the big party at Summit where they're gonna reveal who the winners are. So as the, for the guests in the room, you know, this is something that we have to offer people to help incent them to do their workouts. And Arnold mentioned there's a 500, if you're committed to the challenge every day you work out, you could win $500 as a drawing. Absolutely, and you know, and the key thing is we're going into this lunch break is that when you're out sharing this, you really don't know who's that next life that you can potentially affect in a positive way. And I say it that way instead of change your life, because I don't want to infer that there's something wrong with your life and it change your life. It's how can I make it a little better, right? And, and how can I make it, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows, like, I know probably a lot of people in this room know. You take 10 pounds of body weight off, that takes 40 pounds of pressure off your knees. Okay, so when I get the person that says, oh, I got knee problems, great, I've blown both my down twice each. I broke both kneecaps. And I can do all this stuff, you know? Well, but your knees are killing me. Did you know, right? And so you offer these little tidbits, and then they start going, you know, like Dr. Wheeler's. Did anybody in here get to go to Dr. Wheeler's event? I know he was just out in this area somewhat recently. Okay, these are some of the different reasons to really plug in because you need the ammo in these conversations. And so like on Dr. Wheeler's thing, he had a, he had a deal where he talked about water. And uh, when I had Dr. Wheeler in my town, we had all these docs that happened to show up that just knew who he was. And we didn't advertise this event. We didn't make it, it wasn't even as big as this. It's probably half the size of this. It's kind of an intimate little deal. And he talked about the importance of water. And he said, hey, he goes, just out of blue, he kind of goes, yeah, and a 2% body water loss, he goes, that equates to a 20% muscle deficiency tomorrow. Like, what the heck does that mean in English? 2% body water loss. So I, so I, 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 I signed raising my hand. I said, hey, so if I weigh 195, I go, what's a 2% body water loss for me? What does that mean for me? He goes, oh, he goes, if you're off by just a little under a liter of water a day, it's 20% harder to do whatever you're gonna do tomorrow. He goes, so if you were cleaning your garage out today, it wasn't even a workout, and, and you go all day and you didn't drink enough water, tomorrow it's 20% harder to do the same thing you did today, or to do anything. And I'm going, oh my God, water. And he goes into the delivery system. He's, and then, so then this brain surgeon at the end of that night, she's talking about how 90% of her brain surgery stemmed from a nutrient deficiency to the brain. And she's like, yeah, what Dr. Wheeler's talking about with water, she goes, you can flood your system with all these great nutrients, i.e. Shakeology, that's why this brain surgeon's a coach. But that was pretty cool, three people just downed it right there on the spot. <laughs> so maybe get a picture of that. And so, uh, uh, so <laughs> she goes, but if you don't have water to carry the nutrients to your, through your system, she goes, they don't get there. She goes, you could flood all this. It's like, she, she made this analogy, it's like your lawn. If you have a dead spot in your lawn and you have uh, seed on there, but there's no water, you just have a dead spot with seed in the lawn. Conversely, if you have water getting to there and there's no seed, you just have a, a wet dirt spot in the middle of your lawn. She's like, that's your brain. For a very you know, crude example, there's your brain. And, and so I think about these things and I think, my God, like, we have a responsibility to share what we have because you never know who it's gonna change and sorry, tangent. Um, they, they should have warned you guys about this. Uh, and so, so <laughs> when, when I say you don't know who the next person you're gonna change, I was coaching this military group on the Team Beach Body message boards before Facebook was popular. And I think about this when I'm riding the elevator with a military guy because one of the military guys that was in my group, not only did he change his life, 
But his wife happened to be, does anybody know Cammie Lust's story? Everybody ever heard Cammie Lust's story? The girl that lost 77 pounds from a wheelchair with severe MS? Okay, well, I coached her husband, introduced the whole thing to them, sent him Shakeology samples. He coached her. Dan mentored her. Dan motivated her. And it changed her life. 77 pounds from a wheelchair with severe MS? Her feet were as black as your shirt. They wouldn't amputate her feet. They were, I mean, she was a horrendous state of health. And I'm like, if you can just minimize somebody's situation a little bit, I'm not saying we have some cure-all because we don't. We don't have the only way. We're not narcissistic. We have a way, and it happens to work really well. But who, who are you gonna, whose life could you possibly change? And you don't know that until you start putting it out there. It might be your best friend. It might be your mom. It might be your dad. What about your best friend's mom? Judd Welty is one of my good friends. Uh, his mom has severe lupus. And she went, he used to call her the bikini mom. And at 40, she was still teaching aerobics classes back then in, in Bikini Mom, right? Lupus, 18 years of having a hard time getting out of bed. And Shakeology made a human, humongous difference for her. And who would have known, right? He just, he gave her back. I didn't even ever talk to his mom. I didn't meet his mom until after she had now done P90X twice in insanity and lost 57 pounds at 58 years old with lupus and fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Like, you lost 150 pounds. I'm super like, I, that's amazing. There's a story to that. And if Craig Holiday were here, Craig would be going diving into, what have you learned through that process? Who have you become through that process, right? And how many lives you've changed that you don't even recognize or realize, rather, because of what you're role modeling to other people. So if I'm at the park and I'm the one active dad and every mom's sitting on the bench and, they're, and they ask my wife what I'm on, which is, he's, he's showing, oh, he's on peanut yet. Because I'm the one playing with kids and getting out there, right? And she's out playing with her kids and getting out there. People want to know, why do you have all this energy? Because every other one of us that's, that's this age, is tired in mid-afternoons. We have to share what we have because it's gonna make a difference in their life. But you gotta find out why. Why is it gonna make a difference? What's it gonna do for you? For you and for you and each and every individual. It's quality over quantity. You walk in somewhere and be like, oh, I sell p 90 and Shakeology and I hope none of you do that, but I think years ago that's what we did. And we found that it's building that relationship and really getting to know it a person and one person's life is, is the way to go start one person at a time and when you create that success in the one person they're going to either bring you new people or want to join you so take it one step in one day at a time one person at a time we're going to let you break for lunch be back at one o'clock you have 57 minutes thank you